guys it's a girl cindy welcome back again to another video if you are new here hi my name is cindy thank you so much for clicking to watch this video in today's video guys i just want us to see esther's apology video to black women now maybe some of you might be asking what did she do what did she say why is she apologizing to black women hear me out a podcast video surfaced on TikTok where this Esther, this Asian woman, said horrible things about black women. Now, as a black woman, I didn't want to react to that video. I didn't want to make a video about it. I didn't want that video to sit on my channel because what Esther said about black women was very disgusting. But if you still want to know what Esther said, she said, that because black men are bigger than that then it means black women are wider down there and of course people didn't find that video funny they came for esther they were sending threat messages to her like black people in general this is not about black women now both black women and black men were coming for esther now she has tendered an apology video which people are not accepting yeah um i want to take this moment to sincerely apologize for pro uh, for a topic that i brought up um it wasn't my view or opinion but i understand that even bringing it up was super inappropriate and harmful and i've heard so many of you guys um especially in the black community and among black women and like i'm just sorry for perpetuating a harmful stereotype and moving forward i will no longer bring up any topics that could be harmful to anybody i mean we're all asian and we've dealt with like pretty hateful like stereotypes as well and i should have known better because i've been hurt by those two you know so i truly truly apologize for that and i like it wasn't my intention to hurt anyone but i understand that intentions don't matter when the impact was so hurtful and i'm learning and i'm growing from this and yeah i don't know what to say other than that i'm i'm really sorry yeah i think that's that's the whole point here is that <clears throat> obviously like she said we're all human we are all human like everyone makes mistakes um i can't take back any of the things i've said none of us can but what we can do is try to make the changes going forward. Uh, if you want to hate us regardless, that's that's your freedom to do so. But I think that the people who support us have been waiting for us to own up and take accountability for maybe some of the things that have hurt them as well. And, um, and that's what we're going to do our best to do. So Esther said that it wasn't her view or her opinion. She read out a comment and then she used black women and black men as an example and here she is saying that it was not her view make it make sense the comment you read out didn't talk about black women didn't talk about black men you esther brought black women into your topic or your whatever it is and here you are saying that you are sorry but then it was not your view and not your opinion what kind of apology is this esther guys please if you can find that video on tiktok if you haven't seen it i'm sorry i'm not gonna bring the video here but the comment says some girls some women the person didn't say specifically black women esther you brought black women into this and you are saying it was not your view your opinion Anyways, I've put together a few stitches. Let's just hear what people said about her apology video. And I'm going to show you some comments I randomly grabbed. Let's check the stitches out. The problem with people who think and believe like Esther on the Under the Influence podcast is that they don't think that people care enough about black women to call them out when they say things that are discriminatory and problematic. 
she thought that joke was appropriate because she didn't think anybody would care about us because people are allowed to slander us and to talk about our body parts as if we are less than human. As a matter of fact, she thought that because no one cares about black women globally, her joke would have been deemed as funny to the majority of the people who consume their content, including black men. In that apology video, one of the things that was stated was we have too many people that watch us, we should be more cautious about what we say you didn't know that you ain't know that you ain't know that the problem is not that you should be more cautious the problem is oh we've even expanded into people who would care about certain things like that oh we're not just talking to the type of people that are okay with bigotry <laughs> uh, my bad our videos reach it have gone to a place where people might actually care about these things it wasn't that you said it at all it was you underestimated your reach you thought everybody who was following you and monitoring your content thought just like you you were banking on misogyny and hyper masculinity to back you up i don't care that she made a joke that also harmed her own racial group the problem is that we were the brunt of that joke you wanted it to be known that there was something problematic about us you knew they would forgive you and you also were banking on the fact that you're a part of that racial group so people wouldn't call you out on it well, the joke was meant specifically to harm black women and that is why there is no way no reason and no probable cause for us to accept your whack apology. Y'all just wanna be able to go back to business as usual. And honestly, I'm inclined to allow you. Why? Because the fact of the matter is, platforms like this exist for a very specific target demographic. Y'all don't care to do better. You just wanna keep getting your checks, your views, and your laughs. I'm not gonna to spend too much time on this uh, Esther under the podcast, under the influence podcast. Uh, I want people to understand something about black people, okay? The moment, you really got one time with us, all right? Uh, if you if we are a fan of your stuff, and this, this particular message is for non-people of color and people of color too, but specifically non-people of color, you got one time, okay, to play with us, all right? Um, there's not much you can say to us after that situation. Uh, when you're being racist, or you're being anti-black in any shape or form, okay? Uh, you can pretty much put that, you're not apologizing to us, you're apologizing to your fandom that might be non-people of color, okay? Uh, that's just me being real, that's just me being honest. So I honestly did not hear the apology, nor do I give a fuck. I don't watch the podcast anyway, so I feel like I'm in the clear. So that's just all I got to say about that situation. You got one time to play with us, and that's it. I've had a few videos come up on my free page recently talking about Esther from UTI. Um, I took it, I couldn't remember it. Um, and I feel like people are like, oh, I've never heard that like stereotype just making up. But I feel like she's reverse psychologying the one I've heard, which I've literally been told by like people like even when i was a child i heard this it was like that basically like they'll be like oh yeah asian men have small d's so asian women have small and it's so like really weird and like definitely like not actually based in any scientific reality and i feel like she would esther just like reverse psychology this and applied it to black women which she has no business doing but this is why i feel like I made a video a while back that I was talking about racial pick me pick and people didn't really get what I was talking about but I feel like they're really dangerous because they will use stereotypes about their race to try to make themselves look better and more appealing while like we like enforcing the harmful aspects of those stereotypes against other people and even against their own people. And this is why I think it's really important to remember that even if a stereotype seems good on the surface, it's still not one you really want to embrace because it's often used to weaponize against other people. Like for instance, the whole model minority myth towards Asian Americans, um, which even if you look at that dis disaggregated data, you see that most Asian Americans are not like doing above white people. It's like Chinese and Indians, which has to do with the way the government allows those immigrants to come in with the Heart Seller Act. Only um, people with like qualified 
jobs, like um, high skill uh, education, were allowed to actually immigrate to this country and become citizens. And with the Indian government, they only allowed people to leave India if they had really high education because they wanted to make sure that the like global impression of India wasn't like of a poor worker, but of like a high tech, like industry kind of worker, um, like the very like educated computer science types. And you see that with China as well, so the ones who can come immigrate nowadays are usually highly educated or skilled, not like the poor laborers that used to come over in like the 1800s. And that kind of shapes the model minority myth. And um, everybody else is doing about on par with white people or you realize that a lot of Southeast Asians and Pacific Islanders are doing like way like in poverty and dropping out of high school and have high rates of um, being not that well off and it's completely missed because they look at the average of all Asian Americans including like South Asians, East Asians, Southeast Asians, Pacific Islanders. It's like a really big group of people and the people who do need help kind of get missed because they're just glooped in with the rest of everyone else. and. Then the whole model minority myth thing is used to basically shame black people and like, oh, why are they not doing as well as Asians? Because, you know, you're both minorities, but clearly the American dream can happen. Well, Asians mostly didn't come to this country, couldn't hold citizenship until like the 1900s. And even then, like, it wasn't until I believe like 1965 that there was changed, like, restrictions for immigration and before then it was like you couldn't immigrate if you couldn't speak english or pass like language exams or like they had so many laws excluding citizenship for non-white people not just with uh, even with like black people the uh, dred scott case like you couldn't be a citizen even if you were born in america as long if you were not white and we really forget that part of history so when you look at asian success it's mostly because they were already successful in their home country before they came here it's like they came from middle class backgrounds. They weren't the ones who were like refugees within poverty for the most part. I didn't come across that well spoken in this video and like I don't have as many sources on hand because I'm just kind of like talking right now, not based off of like researching something and trying to share about it, but just like I'm so frustrated that there are still people in the Asian American community who like try to embrace certain stereotypes that literally come from the degradation of our people and like the whole like, oh, the Asians are more successful that was used to spread yellow peril fears, fears that we were gonna come take over America for with our cheap fast labor and the whole like hypersexualization of Asian women was used to like restrict our citizenship, immigration, um, justify crimes against women, like and it's just like they don't even see the way that like anti blackness affects us too. And it's just like even if you're not gonna be against like racism for the sake of moral reasons at least be against racism for the fact that it does not benefit you to side with the like white supremacy like i don't know it's maybe they just grew up and they're too too comfortable in their little bubble of like orange county like socal just asian but even then like a lot of civil rights movements came out of like, southern california like you'd think they would know that yeah um i want to take this moment to sincerely apologize for pro Miss Esther, miss me with the apology, baby. If it wasn't your opinion or your view, then why did you repeat it? Why did you bring it up unprompted, unsolicited? Why? If it wasn't your opinion or your view and you knew that it was inappropriate and don't say you didn't know because you did because you said we may have to cut it why did you bring it up your intentions i'm gonna give you the benefit of the doubt and say your intentions may not been to hurt anybody but your intentions were not to help anybody either and you up there sitting after two weeks now saying you sorry you're not sorry because you hurt anybody you're not sorry because it was inappropriate you sorry because the reaction that you expected was not the reaction that you got that's why you sorry we 
are tired of y'all thinking that y'all can say any and everything y'all want and then when shit hit the fan now you sorry miss me with that shit i'm sorry not sorry and for your uh colleague or whatever to sit right beside you and say y'all can hate us if you choose to or y'all can continue to hate us that's your opinion that just lets me further know that y'all are only apologizing because it looks right y'all not sorry esther you not sorry you say it somewhere else if you know you're not gonna get uh in trouble for it not sh quite sure what your aim was if it wasn't to hurt anybody but it damn sure wasn't to help anybody and again two weeks later that's all you got where did you get that information from because you ain't tell us where it came from it wasn't your opinion of you but you said it anyway where they do that at oh up on under the influence podcast that's where they do it at honey like i said in the last time i hope that and let me let me preface and say um the threat of violence and death is unacceptable i don't agree with that at all especially not against a woman so i i hope that that passes because i don't i don't agree with that but outside of that whatever backlash that you get from running your mouth you should expect it okay you should expect it you knew what you was doing when you said it because you said oh we may have to cut this out tell us what your intentions were now i'm sorry i'm not gonna say anything else that's gonna offend anybody else you might as well get your apology ready for the next thing you say because if you didn't know <laughs> that what you said about us was wrong the next thing you said according to you now the next thing you say you ain't gonna know that was wrong either nice try esther but again miss me with that bullshit hi this is my first video ever um that i'm posting to tiktok so i'm a little bit nervous but I wanted to come on here and um, add my two cents about the apology video from Under the Influence um, podcast show. And specifically, when Esther says that her view on black women that she voiced in that video, the original one, is not her view or her opinion. And I want to talk about that. Um, so first, it is your view and it is your opinion, because why would you say something um, like that if you didn't feel some type of connection to it? Um, second, what needed to happen in this apology video is a discussion, a table discussion about exactly what was said. Um, you know, where it came from, why you felt compelled to say it, and what you can do better in the future to unlearn this opinion. Um, and that is really what the, the con that type of conversation and video is what black women deserved. Not what you gave was under the bare minimum. Let's just put it like that. So... I just want to talk about the fact that it is a really important conversation that we need to have because for one I don't blame you for adopting that type of opinion. We develop our viewpoints from the environment that we grow up in, right? So if you grew up in an environment with other people who held that opinion, you are going to adopt the opinion and that's it's just it's just natural. It's how it works. Um, but what I do blame you for is not being critical about such a hurtful stereotype. 
not thinking about it more, asking yourself where it came from, why it's still here, and what function it serves. Because it's such a specific stereotype. So let's talk about it. So the stereotype is that black women have loose vaginas. There's also another stereotype about Asian women and that they have tight vaginas. It's not a coincidence that these two stereotypes are so directly related and so opposite to one another. And it tells, we can speak a lot about what that does, what these stereotypes do to the two racial communities, black women and Asian women, um, what it does to each one and how they relate to one another because of these stereotypes. And questions like that, you know, why it's still here, what function it serves, are the type of conversations that we need to have because we need to name it. First off is naming it. That's like what has to be done. Not once in that apology video did I see anyone say, reflect specifically on what was said about black women. They kind of just beat around the bush. And I know it's uncomfortable to revisit what you said, but you have a responsibility to do so because it came out of your mouth and because it's so dehumanizing. Um, and yeah, I could have, I think this video, this conversation, apology video could have been, they could have gone a thousand different ways with it, um, educational ways, but they chose not to. They chose to do under the minimum and just a very quick and easy apology and then shut the camera off. And I think that's unacceptable because you have all the tools and and resources to research this topic. And it took you two weeks to make this apology video. In that two weeks, you could have done your research. You could have spoken to black women. You could have educated yourself and then come on to make an appropriate video. But you didn't. And that's what I have a problem with. I love how black women came together to shut down that crappy men's podcast we shut them down so bad baby them views is cut okay them followers were drained okay i just love when black women black women when we come together and we say are you talking about us shut that down shut that down you you thought you was gonna key about us and we came and we destroyed <laughs> that's all i ever want that's all i ever fight for that's it for black women to do what we do best be the best and shut down the worst. If we could come together on more things like this, we could conquer the world. <laughs> we could conquer everything. Nobody would be able to try us. Black American women have so much power. Like us alone, we have so much power on the industry, on everything, okay? I wholeheartedly believe if black women came together on most things we could shut down entire brands okay that were racist that didn't like black women we could literally shut it down but we all got to get on one accord and that's all my pages is about get on one accord but anyway shout out to us esther from the uti podcast girly pop babe listen they're never gonna pick you no man worth having is ever going to pick you. I promise you that. If you do get picked, it'll be by some man who is like from the trash heap, the disposal bin that other women don't want. That's what will ultimately happen here. White supremacy and white society will never pick you either. And you will never be a black woman. I see more and more now how millennia of violent patriarchy hasn't been able to exist by just because of men's actions. It's not just men's violence that has upheld and enforced patriarchal attitudes over all this time. It's women like this bitch Esther who have been there standing alongside patriarchy, standing alongside white supremacy and racism to hold its hand and lead it down the primrose path. And yes, I'm calling her a bitch because I fully believe in fighting fire with fire and paying evil unto evil. If the golden rule is to do others, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. If you're doing others badly, then you deserve to be done equally as badly, if not worse. You ugly, greasy-faced bitch with your 2014 ass haircut. No matter how large or small or medium-sized a black woman's sexual anatomy is, you'll never have it. 
you'll never be a black woman. You'll never have our essence. You'll never have our cool factor, our resilience, our intelligence. You'll never have our grace. You'll never have our strength. You'll never have our multi-factored internal wellspring of talent that we just seem to draw on every single time. You'll never have that. You'll never have the ability to win in the face of some really daunting circumstances, no matter what. That'll never be you, babe. You're just not that girl. Black women are, however, that girl, have been that girl, and will forever be that girl. And that thought alone, I am seeing now more and more, it drives white women and women of color crazy. That no matter what, no matter how down bad our circumstances are, no matter how down bad the statistics are or lack of resources, black women, like, really make magic happen. And that just makes everybody so mad. It makes black men mad. It makes men of other races mad. It makes the entire world over is just mad that black women exist and exist in ways that defy their hatred. Their hatred in their minds is supposed to define our existence. It's supposed to dictate to us how we act, speak, talk, our ambitions, how we live our lives. And it doesn't. And that drives the entire world crazy. And me, I love it. I am absolutely here for it. This is why so many black women like don't believe in solidarity amongst non-black women of color because there is none. Y'all are just as racist and anti-black the first chance you get towards black women and towards women of African descent, towards biracial black women, towards mixed race black women, anyone who has a parent with African descent, you're just unprovoked just thinking about my sexual anatomy, thinking about who I lay down with. I'm not fucking you. So why does it matter? <laughs> like... <laughs> Why Why does it matter? I'm not fucking you and you're not my medical doctor or my obstetrician or gynecologist. So why are you thinking about my sexual anatomy? Isn't that weird? Like, don't you all call it weird when white men say the, like, orientalist, uh, anti-Asian ass stuff they say about y'all's sexual anatomy? Isn't that weird? So now what, you turn around and do it to black women so that you can try and take back some of the power that whiteness and white supremacy takes from you? And it, in taking back your power, it requires that you put your foot on someone else's neck instead of putting your foot on white people's neck, you put it on black people's neck. That, ne that never ceases to amaze me. With people of color the world over, they have so much smoke for people of African descent and they never, ever, 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 ever have this energy for racist white people. It's women like this funny looking bitch, Esther, who have so much smoke for people like Kamala Harris and Beyonce and Serena Williams and Sierra and Kelly Rowland and Meghan Markle. They have so much to say about women like her, women like those kinds of women, and they never have anything to say about white women who call them all types of horrible orientalist anti-Asian names. They never have anything to say about white men who just view them as some little like uh, kinky toy that they can use and misuse at their whatever. They just view them as some kind of silly little fetish that they can pick up and then put down when they're ready. They never have this energy towards them. Why? Are you afraid of white people? Because black people have demonstrated that we're not afraid, hence why slavery is not a thing anymore and why Jim Crow and segregation are not a thing anymore, okay? We put our money where our mouth is. Is it that y'all don't do that? Is that what it is? Or do you want to be close to white people and you view white people putting down black people as something that you have to mimic and emulate in order to be close to that white power structure? Is that what it is? Is it that your pom pom is dry and doesn't have any like motion and that it's never changed a man's life? It doesn't even change your own life? Is that what it is? So you just imagine that black women are walking around with sweet nookie that the whole world wants, which may or may not be true, but... Is that what it is? Your pom pom doesn't have any action, doesn't have any motion, and it just makes you mad sitting there chafing between your legs every time you walk, you chafe because it's so fucking dry? Is that what it is? Since we're getting descriptive and graphic and technical, okay, we can get down in the mud together. I'm not someone who believes in when they go low, uh, uh, I go high. In the words of the late, great Eric Mays, when they go low, I go lower. So bitch, your pom pom is dry like chip. Anyway, we understand now, black woman, mixed race black woman, we can look to this to understand exactly how racism and sexism have so successfully intertwined with one another through the course of time. It's not just white men and white women who are doing it. It's women like this greasy face bitch Esther who are also doing it too. And this is why black women, mixed race black women, monoracial black women, biracial black women need to, we, we need to not just stick together 
but like stay in our lane in terms of giving people attention um, and in terms of just doing our own thing. Because as you can see, no matter what you do, no matter what kind of black woman you are, they're going to have something to say about you because they just lie awake at night thinking about the wonderful sex that you must be having with your sweet black nookie. And it like drives people insane. So I took some screenshots of comments randomly so you guys can see what other people said about Esther's apology video. Please pause to read if you want to. Now, it is the fact that Esther was seated comfortably saying those words about black women. She felt it is funny. She felt, oh, it's okay for people to kiki ha ha and, and all of that. I don't know why they feel so comfortable using black women as an example. They see nothing wrong with that, you know, and then they want black women. They want black women to take it or see it as a joke. And then when black women react and call them out, they say black women are this and that. Can't you all just stop? stop the comment said some girls the comment didn't say black women i don't know what esther is saying anyways guys i thought i should bring this video here to let you know that esther has finally apologized to black women even though people are not accepting her apology video now note that some Asian people are not in support of what Esther said. Now, Under the Influence podcast is under fire at the moment as they are losing their followers. And also, they, I read that they have deleted some videos. I don't know why. And uh, in, in some comment sections, people were also coming for Esther. You know, I read that she has been receiving threat messages. You know, um, a lot is really happening around her and the, the podcast, you know. But yeah, let me know what you all think in the comments, what you have to say. Do you think Esther's apology is genuine? Do you think she is really sorry for what she said? I mean, that was a very disgusting video, in my own opinion. But anyways, you guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like this video, share, comment, and of course, come back for another video. I'm going to see y'all in my next one. Y'all stay blessed. Bye.